friends. Okay. We made it. Good for us. So let's come to the top of the mat. Hands together, feet together. Start to breathe a little bit deeper with some more intention. So that you're actually aware of your aliveness. And on your next exhale, release the arms by your sides. Open the eyes. Inhale to reach up. Exhale to fold forward, bending the knees or not. Inhale, come halfway up. And let's just set the plank for the exhale. Stay in plank for your inhale. And press the downward dog for your exhale. Return to plank for the inhale. Belly in. Return to downward dog for the exhale. Just one more time like that. Arms stay straight. Push into your fingertips. This next time you're in downward dog, after the exhale, either step or jump, keep the hands so that you can inhale to straight legs. Belly in, exhale, fold. Rise up, inhale, reach up. Arms by the sides, exhale. It's easy to draw the belly in when we're just standing. So reach up, see if you can keep that so that you're taller. Exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway up. And again to plank, exhale. Stay in plank for your inhale. And lower to down dog B for your exhale. So squeeze the elbows in as you bring them to the floor. Straight arm plank for the inhale. Down dog B for the exhale. So your butt is going to move up and back to help you get the elbows down. Inhale to straight arm plank. Your butt will come forward and lower down a bit. One more time like this. Your fingers press down the whole time. We'll meet in a straight arm downward dog. So that after the exhale, we can step or jump feet to hands. Inhale there, straighten the legs. Exhale to fold. Rise up, inhale. As tall as you can, arms by the sides, exhale. So our waist is small, inhale. Fold, exhale. It doesn't have to look small, it has to feel small. Inhale, chest forward. To plank, exhale. Stay in plank, inhale. Shut around for your exhale. Plank again for the inhale. Two more times. Exhale, we bend the elbow. If this is too much, just put your knees down. Inhale, we straighten the arms. One more time. Exhale, the elbow just graze us. And we straighten the arms. We'll press the downward dog. And we'll either step or jump, feet to hands. Inhale whenever you get there. Fold, exhale. Rise all the way up. Inhale. Sama Sivihi, arms by the sides. Exhale. Inhale to reach up. Exhale to fold forward. So we're just breathing like with this metronome quality. Inhale, chest forward. And step to plank. Exhale. Stay there for the inhale. Shut around the exhale. We'll find upward facing dog for the inhale. Downward facing dog for the exhale. But we'll return to plank for the inhale. And do that same vinyasa again. Exhale to chaturanga. Inhale to the top of the foot. Don't forget about your pinky toes. Downward dog exhale. One more time like this. Inhale forward. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, keep the legs straight if you can. And downward dog, exhale. After that exhale, step or jump forward. Inhale to straighten the legs, sum them out. Exhale, fold, drop your head, relax the neck. Rise up, inhale. Arms by our sides, exhale. Bend into the knees, Utkatasana. 
Inhale. Let's fold as we exhale, straightening the legs, lifting the butt. Inhale, halfway up. Send the left foot back. Warrior one, lower that left heel. Reach up. Lower the fingertips down. Exhale. Back foot forward. Inhale. And send the right foot back. Angle that foot so the heel presses down. Reach up. Inhale. Bring your hips down. Exhale. Back foot forward. Inhale. Notice your chest goes forward. Send the left foot back. Exhale. Warrior one again. Inhale to reach up. Exhale. Bring your hips down. Back foot forward. Inhale. Right foot back. Exhale. Warrior one. Inhale. Reach as high as you can. Fingers down. Exhale. Back foot forward. Inhale. Left foot back. Exhale. Warrior one. This time we'll stay for three breaths. You can either have your hands shoulder width or palms together or steeple mudra. You just want to get your arms straight. Let's exhale the fingertips down. Back foot forward, inhale. And right foot back, exhale. Warrior one, inhale. Three breaths. So if your shoulders are tight and you try to bring your hands together, you might find that keeping the arms straight is almost impossible. So take the ego out of it and do what serves you and the integrity of the pose, it doesn't have to look any certain way. Without energy flow and direction, let's lower the palms flat this time. Step to plank. We'll stay here in plank. We'll press the heels back, the belly button up, and on your exhale, chaturanga. Take your time. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale to downward facing. We'll meet there. We'll take a few breaths. We haven't held the downward dog really yet. Notice how if you draw your belly in, it's a nice stretch for the back. Sometimes I feel lucky to have back issues because then I notice these little things and it feels good. Okay, heels up high, inhale. Bend the knees, exhale, jump forward. Inhale whenever you're there. Fold, exhale. Bend into the knees. Inhale, look to Dasana. Samasthiti, exhale. Bend the knees, reach up, inhale. Fold forward, exhale. Halfway up, inhale. And send the left foot back, exhale. High lunge for the inhale, reach up, and open up warrior two, exhale. Straighten the front leg, inhale. Bend the front leg, put the right hand, big toe side of the foot, exhale. Rise up, inhale, straighten that right leg, push the ground away. Bend the knee, place the right hand, big toe side of the foot. One more time, as we straighten the leg, we push into the ball of the foot, Bend the leg, dig that right heel into the floor. Use that hamstring. Inhale to rise up. We'll just lower the hands or fingertips down. Exhale. Back foot forward. Inhale. The right foot back. Exhale. High lunge. Inhale. Open up warrior two. Exhale. Straighten the left leg. Inhale. Exhale, bend the knee. This is a variation on partial Vanasana. Inhale, straighten. Press the ball of your foot down. Exhale, bend. Look up at your top thumb if you can. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale to rise up. We'll bring our fingertips or hands down. Exhale, back foot forward. Inhale. Left foot back, exhale. High lunge, inhale. Open up 
open up to warrior two. Exhale, straighten the right leg, inhale. Another variation, bend the knee, put your elbow on your thigh, reach your left arm behind the back. Grab your right thigh with your fingers, bring your chin toward your left shoulder. We're twisting the torso open. So our chest is facing out, not down. Take one more breath here. We'll keep the legs like this, just in warrior two shape. Inhale to rise to your warrior two. Fingertips down, exhale. Notice how tempting it was to straighten that front leg. Back foot forward, inhale. And right foot back, exhale. High lunge, inhale. Open up warrior two, exhale. Straighten the left leg, inhale. Bend the knee, exhale. Elbow to thigh, right arm behind the back. So some of you are going to have your fingers all the way on your inner left thigh. Some of you, it'll be more like your knuckles are by your butt. Just go as far as you can. It'll feel like your chest is spinning up toward the ceiling. And you can see the ceiling that's right above you. Press your waistline back so that you're not in the back bend. Let's pay attention to the legs being warrior two shape. On your next inhale, just rise to warrior two, keeping that front leg bent. Fingertips down, exhale. Back foot forward, inhale. Left foot back, exhale. Rise up, inhale, high lunge. Exhale, open up, warrior two. Straighten the front leg, inhale. Bend it, exhale, right hand pinky toe side of the foot, left arm over the ear. This is the Ashtanga form of Parshokanasana. If it does not suit you, either repeat one of the other ones we did, or put a block under your right hand. It will make it much easier to spin your chest up if you're higher with that right hand. So if you don't want to get a block, you could even just be on fingertips. On your next exhale, lower the left fingers down. Take your time, back foot forward for your inhale. It's fine if you're on a different pace than me. Right leg back, exhale. High lunge for the inhale. It's just this logical progression. Exhale, open it up. Straighten the front leg. This is just to get some of the cracks and pops out of the hip. Exhale to bend. And we place that left hand somewhere. Right arm sweeps over the ear. So the gaze of this pose is at the right hand. You can see that the pinky finger is angling down toward the ground. That's because your shoulder's rotating. Sometimes instead of looking at the hand, I try to look up at the ceiling right over me just to see, is the arm blocking my view? If it is, it usually means that my torso is not quite enough spinning open. I need to get that left hip further under. Okay, fingertips down. Back foot forward, inhale. Fold, exhale. Bend into the knees, Utkatasana. Inhale. Let's straighten the legs for Samastiti. We'll return to Utkatasana, inhale. Return to Samastiti, exhale. Utkatasana, see if you can sit a little further back in your heels and straighten the legs by pushing down into the feet. Just one more time like that. Inhale to reach. Exhale to straighten. Bend into the knees. Inhale. And either just take your normal vinyasa or find your vakasana. Hands in front of the feet about 12 inches. Knees toward the armpits. Rock forward, start to lift your heels up towards your butt, belly in, and those of you that went to the arm balance, jump back. All paths will lead to downward dog. 
Whenever you get to down dog, just shake out your head. Whatever you need to do to make sure the neck is loose. I'm going to wipe sweat. Okay. Bring the right foot forward between the hands. Lower the back heel, triangle pose. So the right hand is already down. You can keep it on the ground or on the big toe, but you're already in this low position. So now you just start extending your left arm up, scooping the right hip under. You get into the pose kind of through the back door. And that helps us work that right hip under a little bit more. We have to pay more attention to it. Keep everything the same except extend your top arm over the ear. And see if you can reach a little further to bring some stretch to the left waist. You're reaching in opposition to your hip. Now let's lower the left fingertips down. Step to downward dog. And we'll just do the other side. Left foot will step forward. We'll lower the right heel. Start scooping the left hip under you so that your torso can spin up. So if you have the big toe grip, make sure you're not pulling your uh, ball of foot off the floor. So when you're, you're pulling with your hand, but you're pushing down with your foot so much that there is no lifting of that. Let's reach the right arm over the ear. And as you're reaching with your right arm, you're pushing down with your right foot. The only possible result is a stretch through that side body. Oh, that feels amazing. I could stay here all day. Instead, let's lower the hands down and step back either vinyasa or downward dog. Whenever you get to dog, lift your heels high. Inhale. Bend your knees. Exhale. Jump forward. Inhale there at the top. And exhale to pull. Bend the knees. Inhale, reach up. We'll bring the right arm under the left. I'm just going to face you, but you're fine as is. Palms together, right leg on top, foot behind the ankle. And we'll try to sit low and lift our elbows up. Thumbs away from the face. Just two more breaths here. Squeeze the thighs. One more breath here. Squeeze as much as you can. We'll inhale to release, foot comes down, arms go up, and then we'll just go for the other side. Left arm under, bend the knees, find your balance, and when you can, left leg over. You may or may not be able to hook the foot behind the ankle. The lower you sit in your Utkatasana, the easier that's going to be. And just squeeze your limbs. Two more breaths. Last breath here. I will slowly release on an inhale, arms up. Exhale to fold forward. Halfway up, inhale. Just send the left foot back. Exhale. Simple twist. Left hand will stay there. Right arm up. Inhale. Untwist. Exhale. Launch the back leg up, inhale, and open your left hip to the side. We'll take three breaths in Arch and Rasana. Chest forward in opposition to that left leg moving back. Untwist for your inhale. Step to your lunge again for the exhale. Not so simple twist. We'll bring the hands to the thigh. I like to roll the flesh of the thigh in and get the flesh of the torso outside of the leg. We'll hook high up on the arm. 
either palms to prayer or left hand down, right hand up. And we'll stay for five breaths. We'll try to swing that right hip back. That's two. Three. If you don't feel anything in your right hip, you can twist deeper. You can get this arm further over because there is something very magical to be found here. It's like pigeon, but more awkward because you're balancing crazy. Okay. Let's slowly unravel. Back foot forward, inhale, and right foot back, exhale. Simple twist, right hand is under the shoulder, left arm up, inhale. We'll untwist for the exhale, launch forward for the inhale, and start to open up to the side for our chandrasana. Just like that triangle, just like that parshvakanasana. We're spinning the torso open. We're looking at that top thumb if we can. Let's untwist. Inhale there, step back for your exhale, and take your time getting into your prayer twist. The more time you take to set up, the deeper your final result will be. You might even want to put your back knee on the floor and play with unbending your front leg, then rebending it. That's kind of a little lever system. You can, at that point, if you did back knee down, you could decide to keep it down or lift it up again. Okay, let's slowly unravel. Step back, vinyasa. Okay, so you did eagle pose. That was sort of to prep us for Gomukhasana, which comes at the end of second series, but we're going to do it now. So we're going to bring the right leg forward, knee to the center of the mat, left leg behind it, crossing as high up as you can, and feet together, your toes will be facing back, and we'll sit on the heels somewhat. You can also move your feet out of the way and sit on the block if you want. We're going to reach down and interlace fingers under the right knee. Now we'll try to lift the chest, roll the shoulders back, and draw the chin down like Jalandarabhaga. This pose takes a lot of squeezing the thighs together and a lot of pushing the right knee down into the hands. Take one more breath. This is Gomukhasana A. And we'll release the grip and we'll go for B. Right arm up and over, left arm behind the back. If you can't get the fingers to link, you can either use a strap or just deal with one of the arms. You might want to work the left rotation. You might want to work the right rotation. You don't really have to do both at this time. Maybe in 20 years. So wherever you are, now just think about your top rib. Not your top rib, your lowest rib. I'm thinking top because it's poking forward. But that lowest rib, we're going to tuck it in just a smidge. Take some of the back bend out. And slowly release your grip. Bring the hands down. And step back, vinyasa. Other side, left knee comes forward, center, then lean a bit forward so you can get your right leg foot really close to your left. The little pooch of uh, extra flub at the top of the thigh, hook it over the other one. Okay, interlace under that left knee and push down like mad. At the same time, we're trying to lift the chest and drop the chin. 
I find this A position infinitely harder than the B position. Okay, slowly release your grip. That right arm is going to roll forward so that you can get your knuckles between your shoulder blades with your palm facing out. And the left arm, if you bring it forward of you, then up and just bend the elbow, that'll be a little bit easier than letting your elbow splay out to the side. Same idea as Kapodasana, if your elbow splays, you have yet one more step to bring it in. So instead, just keep it in the whole time. We want to work smarter, not harder. We want to make each pose as streamlined and effortless as possible. Press your head back slightly so that your throat is open. Tuck that lowest rib in just a bit. Good. And let's slowly unravel and vinyasa. Sweat wipe an opportunity. And after your exhale, let's step or jump. Feet to hands. Inhale whenever you're there. Fold, exhale. Bend into the knees, Uttanasana. Inhale. Flying pigeon hands to prayer, right ankle to lower left thigh. So we're just going to take this for maybe a minute, you can stay right here. You can bring your fingertips down by bending your left knee more. That will increase the stretch for your hip. Or if you want to come into an arm balance, feel free. That would be right knee to right upper arm, right foot hooking on left upper arm, leaning your weight forward, pushing your shin into your arms so that your butt stays up and the leg can go up. Those of you that went to the arm bounds, return to the standing pose, the flying pigeon pose. And we'll all just slowly rise and lower the foot. So before we do the other side, just one little explanation. So earlier you did this, and then you pushed into your feet to straighten your legs, or sometimes we go all the way to squat, then you push down in order to get up. It's the same idea with your shin in this arm balance. You have to push down in order to get your butt up. Okay, side two. Left ankle to lower right thigh. Lean your chest forward, stick your butt out. Belly in. And your hips will decide if fingertips to the floor is appropriate. When that feels good, you're going to get curious. What does it feel like palms to the floor? At some point, you'll be curious about the arm balance. It's just a natural progression. But everybody's on their own pace. And you may or may not in your life ever actually be curious about this particular pose. But we don't force it. We let it be this evolution of what's around the next bend. So if you're in the arm balance, we'll start to make your way back to the standing pose. And we'll slowly rise up and just lower the foot. Inhale, reach up. Exhale to fold. Come halfway up for the inhale. Left foot back for the exhale. I might kill us right now. Twist the triangle, inhale. Untwist for your exhale. Back foot forward, inhale. So it's the same pattern as earlier. Right foot back, exhale. But we're entering a very hard pose. Left arm up, twist, inhale. Untwist, exhale. Right foot forward, inhale. Chest is forward. Left foot back, exhale. Twist, 
Inhale. Untwist. Exhale. Back foot forward. Inhale. Right foot back. Exhale. Left arm up, twist. Inhale. Untwist. Exhale. Back foot forward. Inhale. Left foot back. Exhale. This time we're going to stay. Left hand presses. Right arm up. Right hip back. Three, four, and five. Slowly unravel. Back foot forward. Inhale. Other foot back. Exhale. So the heels are lining up. The back foot is at an angle. Front foot is facing straight forward. And we lift that top arm and try to look at it. Look at that thumb. The bottom hand, we're pushing down into even the thumb and pointer. That's three, four, and five. Slowly unravel, back foot forward, inhale, fold, exhale, bend the knees. Inhale, hands to prayer, exhale, right ankle again to lower left thigh. So some of you will repeat that flying pigeon feeling. Otherwise, you will start to lift the leg up. So you're going to slide your hands under and then pick your shin up like it's a platter. And we're trying to get the foot as high as the knee. So that might mean that you need to drop the knee a bit or lift the foot a bit or lower the entire structure a bit. So either stay here or return to flying pigeon or put this heel in your belly button for a half lotus type of thing. If you're in half lotus, your knee is pointing down. Hands to prayer for a moment. Make sure that your butt is not sticking out too far. Tailbone angling down. Right arm behind the back, find your toe. Inhale and fold forward. Exhale, the left hand is going to come down. You can have it on a block, it doesn't have to be the ground. You could be on fingertips. Eventually, your left palm will be flat, just outside of your left foot. And we'll drop the head. Balance is a little trickier if you drop the head, so play that by ear. If you're folded, come halfway up for your inhale, stay there for your exhale, and then come the rest of the way up. We'll all release from wherever we are, shake it out, make sure everything still works, and we'll find flying pigeon side two. Okay. Left ankle to lower right thigh. This should feel pretty good. If it doesn't, just do it more often. And when you're ready, slide the arms under, pick your leg up. Sometimes it's nice to put your leg like this on your kitchen counter. I know it sounds crazy, but then your arms don't have to work. You can do things on your counter, put your laptop on your counter, watch your favorite show. It does not have to be a whole serious spiritual expression. It's just stretching your hip. Okay. So when you're ready, heel to belly button, that knee will start pointing down. It's very tempting in order to keep the foot here to lean forward and stick your butt out. So just as best you can, try to drop your tailbone down and still stand up somewhat straight. May or may not work, but do your best. So when you can, left arm behind the back. If your toe is not available, Either just ignore that left arm piece or find a strap and we'll fold forward, right hand up. Take your time descending. And 
those of you who fold it, come halfway up to the inhales so that you don't get dizzy. Exhale, fold. And then come the rest of the way up. We'll all just release, shake it out. Okay. So we'll come to the top of the mat, just a simple vinyasa. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Halfway up, inhale. Step or jump back. Chaturanga, exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Walk your hands just about six inches further back, so your down dog's a little shorter. We're going to jump through and have a seat, but between hands. So look forward when you jump so that you have a chance at encouraging the body to move forward. Okay, right leg is going to fold back, like a Virasana, knee facing the side. If this doesn't suit you, just straighten the leg. We just want 90 degrees between the thighs. Twist to face the right leg. Inhale, right arm up. And exhale to fold over. This is Parigasana, which is also at the end of second series, which feels amazing. I love this pose. So this left hand, I like to often have it out in front to help get that left shoulder further forward. Because we want the torso to revolve open and up, just like in those standing poses. It's just way harder now because we have all this surface area on the floor. Take one more breath. And when you're ready, release your grip, whatever you have. And let's release that right leg. We'll go through vinyasa so that we get another chance to jump forward. We'll just pick our butt up, lean forward, slide the feet through that little space, and then complete however you want. So when you're going to jump forward, don't let your wrists come up. Have a, have a look-see up here for a sec. I'm going to do it on this part of my floor for the sake of lighting. So this is very tempting, or this is very tempting but it's never going to get you the strength that you need. So, palms flat. Just deal with the agony of it not working out. Let's jump through and have a seat. Other side for Parigasana. So the right leg will stay straight. Left leg will fold back or it won't. We'll face the left leg. Reach up, inhale. And side bend, exhale. Each inhale, it's a reach with the top arm. Each exhale, maybe you could twist a little bit more. Inhale, expand. Exhale, twist. And just like in partial Kanasana, I try to look up and if this arm is blocking the view, it means that I'm not quite revolved open as much as I could be. Okay, let's slowly get out of there. Release that left leg. Cross your shins, and this is important for the act of jumping through. Place your palms flat, lean forward, and just practice leaning forward and getting your butt off the ground. It seems pretty simple, and it is, but it's also a big deal. So you're training your arms to be straight and your hands to be flat. And keep your shoulders forward. Just start creeping your feet through. And see how that feels to be leaning forward. Feels kind of precarious, but very strong. And then when you were ready, just step back. Good enough. Okay, let's jump through, have a seat. Yet another chance to practice jumping through. Yay! I know, Nook is thrilled. Okay. Right leg on the left thigh, just like that flying pigeon thing. Knees down, foot is flexed, chest is up. And we're just going to slide our hands through and pick the leg up like we did before while standing. 
and you'll either keep your hands like this or put your foot in your elbow. But this is on the same plane. So, you know, don't let it kind of spin to the side. Just keep it lined up. Push the foot a little bit into either the left arm or that space. Let's release the foot to the floor for Marjasana A. Heel's going to be right close to your sitting bone. Foot forward. Reach with the right arm. Armpit low on the shin. Palm is going to face up as your arm passes the side of the mat so that your knuckles go by your hip. So your palm is facing open. Then when you're ready for that left hand to come around, it just plumps right into the right palm. Now we can fold and bring the head toward that left shin. We're using this as a prep for foot behind the head. Okay, so let's rise up. Keep this armpit location that you've established. Just release your bind and place your hands on the same plane as your foot. So your right armpit is very smushed in with your shin. And lift your right foot, lift your butt, lift your left leg, and just hang out here everything off the ground except two palms and then lower down. That was fun, right? Okay, other side, left leg. This is number four pose to start and slide your hands under and lift it up. Make a choice. Do you want it in your elbow or not? Try to roll your shoulders back. It's going to help us not slouch. Okay, Marjasana A. So that left heel is close to your butt. There's about five inches between your foot and your right thigh. Reach as far forward as you can and start to roll that left arm around the outer leg. So I'm keeping my right hand on the floor as my left arm goes around. That's just because today I feel like doing it that way. It is helpful for uh, getting your left armpit forward and therefore lower on the shin. The lower your armpit is on that left shin, the tighter your bind is going to be. There's a million ways into every pose. And every teacher is going to have different tricks in the trade for you. That's part of why in a Mysore room there's no talking. It's just so you figure out your own tricks. Which sometimes is like reinventing the wheel because your friend already knows the trick and you just have to learn it for yourself. Okay, so let's slowly get out of there. We'll cross the shins. Your feet could be up or down. Oh, before we do that, I lied to you. We have to try to lift everything. So keep your left arm glued to your left shin and then pick it up. Okay, now let that go. So now just practicing the jump back. We'll cross the shins. Your feet could be up or down as you practice leaning forward. If the edges of your feet come down, no big deal. They're still going to slide through the space you make. And vinyasa when you're ready. Okay, let's jump through, have a seat. We'll bring the right leg to a happy baby. I'll try to get the knee back. When I do this, my knee flies away. So I use both hands to kind of corral it and I kind of clamp my right arm over it. Just try to sit up tall. We're going to change the position in a moment, 
but where your thigh is right now in relation to your torso will pretty much stay the same. So left hand comes over, sundial, we're gonna slide that right arm through. Take your calf muscle up and over, right hand down. Straighten that leg in the mount. Look under the left arm. We'll re-bend that right leg. Let's readjust to get the leg just a little higher on the shoulder. And clamp it on just by bending the knee, palms down, butt up. And when you can, butt forward, leg up. And you'll feel as your butt goes forward, it's easier to get the leg up. And then come on down. And we'll just do the other side which started with Happy Baby. So left leg, we use our arm strength to push that leg back. Okay, sundial, right hand to left foot, left arm under, negotiate this calf muscle, that shoulder as far under your knee as you can get it. I often just keep my left hand close to me facing front. A lot of people put it out to the side. I'm not sure if putting it out to the side is like a function of Instagram because it looks more spacious and it looks better. I don't know. We have to be wary of those poses that get manipulated due to Instagram. Okay, so let's re-bend that left leg, get it as high on your shoulder as you can, and bend your knee, clamping that leg onto your arm. Then palms flat, lean forward, and push your left leg into your arm so that you can get your butt and your right leg up. And just play with, where is your butt, where is your leg? And then let it go. Let's vinyasa, will rest in downward dog. Vinyasa any way that you want. Look up to hands and knees. We're going to find our Baddha Hasta, Shirsasana A, which is just that headstand that you know where your fingers are interlaced. When we get up there, we're going to try to bring our legs to about 90 degrees from the body. So they're level with the floor. We won't really know because we cannot see them. But take your time getting up there. And when you feel like you have the balance comfortably, start to bring your legs down. Keep them straight. Point your toes. If you have any back issues, either don't do this or bend the knees. Start to rise up again. Push the inner edges of your feet together. That's going to help you get your legs back to their headstand positioning. And then we'll bend the knees to the chest and just come down very softly to child's pose. Okay, so rise up, vinyasa. Let's jump through, have a seat, lay back. I'm gonna move my laptop because now we're low. Okay, so we'll do our happy baby again, right leg. Just like you did while sitting up, but a lot easier. Also, now we have the feedback of the floor. Can your knee touch the floor? 
The answer is either yes, no, or depends. If you bend this left knee, you'll have a different answer about your right knee. Okay, so left leg wherever you want. We're going to rise up and take either the shin across the chest. If you're doing that, you can let your head be on the ground. Or you'll take your ankle to your left elbow and make a pillow. And then you're trying to get your head down, but it's really hard. I've seen people do it, but dang, it's hard. Or you can try putting your foot behind your head, which is one of those things where you're just curious what's around that bend. You have to be a little bit bored with the, the options that I gave you in order to want to see what happens there. Okay, so if you're putting behind your head, keep it there. Otherwise, let go of whatever pose you have. We're all going to sit up. And once you're sitting, you'll put your right shoulder in front of your knee again. And we'll try just like we did before, palms down leg up. So your right leg is either behind your head or not, but you're trying to get your left leg up to the ceiling. Miss Carol decided now's a good time to go to the bathroom. <laughs> okay, and look what's going on. So right leg, if you didn't have your foot behind your head, right leg is like this, like it was before, and then you're just practicing left leg up. Let's see. Okay, very good. Let's vinyasa. And then we'll try the other side. So getting that leg up in the arm balance there, whether the foot is behind the head or not, it's just a lot of low belly and hip flexor strain. Let's come through, have a seat. So that piece, the lifting up, is not a flexibility piece. Let's lay back. Happy baby with the left leg. And experiment with what you want your right leg to do. And when you're ready, either left shin comes across the chest, just like when we were sitting. This never gets old. I feel this quite a lot. I'm curious what happens if I put the ankle in the elbow. I'm curious if I hold my hand, can I get my head down? The answer is no, but it's kind of fun to try. And then if you feel like trying to put behind the head, just approach it with the idea of maybe it will work. Maybe we will abort mission. There is no Right answer to that. Just do what feels okay. It should feel pretty good. At first, when I was trying this, it just didn't work. Then one day it worked, but it was a little too much. And then it started being a really nice feeling stretch for the back. So if your foot behind your head, keep it there. Otherwise, let go of your pose and sit up. And you're going to either have your left leg clamped around your left arm or behind your head. The palms flat, butt up, leg, right leg up as high as you can get. Take your time. Anouk, can you get your leg a little higher on your arm? Life will be easier there. The setup takes an extra bit, but then the full thing becomes easier. Okay. Good. And when you've had enough of such things, vinyasa. Okay, we'll come to hands and knees again. I'm just going to spin around because if I fall, I want to go that way because there's more open space in my house. We're just going to do Badahasana Shrasasana C. If you found A was difficult, repeat A, fingers interlaced. Otherwise, C position is palms flat, forearms parallel to each other. 
head will come down sort of between the wrists. Try not to let your hands migrate. And when you feel like you can, bring your legs to that 90 degree place so that you can see your toes. Squeeze your legs together and slowly bring them up again. Keep squeezing them together so that you have an easier time of this lift. And then either chaturanga out of it, chaturanga, or child's pose. If you did the chaturanga, you might just take your recovery in downward dog, or you might decide you want a child pose anyway. Make sure that you're breathing okay. Okay, so let's come on down to hands and knees again. So now we'll just go for a pinch of my arasana, and we'll just do that scissory leg stuff that we've done a few times in the past few weeks. Instead of looking at your fingertips, try to look more like in this region, elbow to forearm, and just see if that changes the game for you at all. You can have a wall behind you, but make sure it's like, two feet behind you, not right up in your business. We'll just lift with one leg and let them kind of change positions in the air, and then we'll practice coming down with the other. Wow, the core requirement is enormous to do the leg that you're not used to doing. So whenever you're done playing with that, we're going to meet in Anahatasana. And take your time if it's going well for you. We will try it again in a few minutes. So Anahatasana is arm down front. Either forehead down or chin down. And we'll try to bring the belly in so that we minimize our back bend just a little bit. Okay, and so we rise up. Well, let's just have a seat in Virasana for a moment. If you could put a block under your butt, that's fine. And we'll just try to get our, if you're not on a block, your arches are very close to your hip, right up on there. No space there. The knees and thighs are straight forward. We're going to push our toenails down into the floor. And we're going to use the pushing of the feet to get our butt off the ground so that we're standing on our shins and then we'll lower our butt down again. So if you can do this, we're just gonna try it one more time. Go as slow as you can, and just pay attention to what are your feet doing? What are your thighs doing? It's not that fun, but that is your Lagumajrasana strength. Just saying. Okay, step back vinyasa. Because I know a lot of you struggle with Lagu, but I'm watching you on this little laptop over here, and what we just did was no problem. So you obviously have the strength of your feet and some awareness there. Okay, let's come down to hands and knees again. Just a pinch of my arasana, where we are gonna look forward toward our fingers. So we'll measure out the elbows, plunk the hands down, grip the ground with the fingers, especially the pointer and thumb, kind of like those two fingers want to touch each other but they won't actually move. They'll just be stuck on the mat. Rise up whenever you're ready. And just notice where are you looking when you start? And does that change at all 
when you think of increasing your back pain. When you're ready to come down, just let your legs change which one lowers. So that you did a little scissor action in the air, and we'll just meet in a child's pose. We'll just do that same thing one more time. This time we're just going to kick up with the leg we don't like. And we'll try to do a minimal kick. The more flexible you are, the less kick you'll need. And that's usually why we prefer to kick with one leg versus the other. It's just our hip flexibility. I let my hip open in order to get the leg higher so that I don't have to kick quite as much. And then when the second leg lifts, I square up again real quick. When you're ready, come down with the leg you don't like to come down with and take your rest. Okay, rock forward to plank and lower down vinyasa. We'll jump through, have a seat. For Bharadwajasana. So we're kind of going backwards through second series. It's kind of fun like that sometimes. So right leg, half lotus. Left leg, like Virasana, but where our knees are now wide. So in Virasana, we had our knee facing straight forward. Now it's at the edge of the mat. We're going to twist to the right. Reach around with the right hand for the big toe, left hand under the right knee. Each inhale, sit a little taller. Exhale to twist a little more. Okay, this is another one I could stay here all day. It feels so good. Let's slowly get out of there and we're just going to change sides. And you guys know at this point ways to avoid virasana, you just straighten your leg. A way to avoid half lotus, you just put your foot near your right inner thigh. You can either take your bind first and then get your hand under your knee, or hand under the knee first and then the bind. Try to get both sitting bones on the ground. Very tempting to lean too far to the left. So just notice if that's happening for you. We'll slowly get out of there. Unravel your legs. Let's cross at the shins. Place the palms not right next to your hips because then you're you have nowhere to go. So reach forward. That will allow you to lean forward with your shoulders. Your hands are right by your butt. There's nowhere to lean. So reach out, lean forward, lift your butt, slide your feet through, and vinyasa. Let's rock forward to plank and lower down to the belly. Shalavasana A. We can't really do the back bends in reverse order or we would die. So Shalavasana A is knuckles by our sides, chest up, legs up, squeeze your legs together. This is pretty much the shape of your body in Pinchamayarasana. Notice how your hips are pushing down and your legs are lifting up. It's that same idea in, in an inversion of pincha. You have to push your hips away from the direction of your feet. Let's slowly come on down, hands under the shoulders. 
Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. So between back bends today, we're going to go to a neutral headstand. For this one, either bottom has to A or C, which you've already done both of those. So they're sort of safe-ish. Your choice, either way, the elbows, you measure them out, so you know they're not too wide. Either interlace your fingers or don't, or your head will be in the same spot. So you can even interlace your fingers, place the head, and then move the hand. Come up whenever you're ready. Try to say about five breaths. And when you're ready to come down, decide do you want chaturanga or do you want to just lower finding your child's pose? Okay, make your way to your belly. I will find Shalavasana C. We're going to interlace the fingers behind the back, reach our knuckles toward our feet, lift the legs, lift the chest. You end up with this crazy chest stretch here. Okay, slowly come on down, hands under the shoulders. Inhale to upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, we will attempt Badahasta B. So that's still the same elbow position, same head position. However, the head is now in front of the forearm. So instead of this, it's this. And your forehead and your forearms are right up on each other's business. So either this one or a different one. Rise up when you're ready. You choose your exit strategy. Ideally, it's a choice and you didn't fall out of it or come out prematurely. We just try to get our mind really involved in that decision. Any of the, the modes out are fine so long as it's something you intended. Let's rock forward to plank and lower to the belly. Done your asana. So we'll get the same chest stretch that we did from Shalavasana C. We're going to reach for our ankles. And now that stretch on the chest is going to come from kicking the legs into the hands. The more you kick, the more you stretch your chest. My legs feel really tired today, so this is very hard. Okay, slowly come on down. Before we do any vinyasa, walk your right arm out to the right and just roll onto it. This is for your pecs, pec major. Just roll as much as you want. There should be no popping in the shoulder. Okay, head over to the other side. We're trying to get that left hand either shoulder height or eyeball height, but it's quite far away from your body. That is why it's difficult to roll over onto. Okay. Oh, hello. My little girl decided to join us. Okay, let's unravel toward the center, hands by the shoulders. Upward facing dog, inhale, 
the downward facing dog exercise. Okay, option for Baddha, Pasta, Shirsasana, D. For many people, this is their least favorite of all the seven headstands of Ashtanga. For me, it's like tied for my least favorite. There's two that I find sort of horrible. So in this one, it starts the same as A. You measure out your elbows, interlace your fingers, but then you're going to put your hands on your shoulder. When the head comes down, you only have a head and two elbows on the ground. You'll walk your feet in and you'll start to lift your legs and you'll push into your elbows like a crazy person. You'll try to stay for five breaths. You'll make a game plan for your exit and you'll try to stick to that plan. I want to see how a note chooses to get down. She's just in there for the marathon. Hey, so good. Woohoo! All right. So let's rock forward to plank and lower to the belly. Arjuna Dhanurasana. So we're going to reach for the ankles again. Kick so you're opening the chest and shoulders. And then roll to your right side. You have to kick harder with your left leg. You're trying to get your heels far away from your butt. That's going to also mean pushing your pubic bone forward. And roll through center over to the other side. If we were all in the same room together, I might be running around the room and rolling you because it's hard to figure out how to roll yourself. We'll come back through center and we'll stay for five breaths in center. One, kick a little more, two, three. The arms are pretty relaxed, but the hands are gripping. Four, and five. So we come on down, hands by the shoulders, inhale upward facing, and exhale downward facing. So, some of you will attempt Pinchamayarasana again. We're kind of going in a back bend trajectory. Carol needs to do it from her headstand because she's addicted to this transition. So, either way is fine, whether you start Pincha how we did before or whether you start in headstand. We'll do it twice. Once I'll do it with you, once I'm just going to watch you. So, it would be a requirement that you're comfortable in Vata Hasta Shirasasana C first if you want to do this transition. Ideally, the core strength allows you to lift both legs at once so that you can stay somewhat symmetrical for the entirety of this ordeal. And I think about that Shalavasana shape and I start pushing the hips opposite the feet so that a back bend shape starts to emerge. I roll a little toward the forehead, push into the hands, and start to turn the gaze toward the fingers. So the feet are reaching in the same direction that the fingers go, but the hips push opposite. If you can go slow and symmetrical, it's, it's sort of a doable thing. I'm going to watch you guys. So a note, just think a little more up with your feet, a little bit less over. Like you're trying to touch the ceiling and keep your kicking leg straighter. Yes.
There was like a hover there for a moment. Good, so Carol, your hips further away from the wall because you're a little bit conservative in that back bend. So go for broke and push your hips away. Okay, pretty good. All right, so we're gonna meet on our backs. And we'll lay down, ah, but not quite for resting yet. We're going to just have our heels close to our butt. Robot arms, push into your elbows, lift your hips. And roll your shoulders under you a bit. So this is an Anusara form of Seju Bandhasarvangasana. It's very helpful to get the chest open in this, in this format. If we push the elbows down, you're going to feel your upper back muscles contract. And the result is that your chest feels like it's going to explode over your face. That's a great opening. And you just have to push the back of your head down so that your chin is not smushed into your chest. Open throat. Let's slowly come on down. Feel free to repeat that or go for Urdhva Dhanurasana. Hands by the shoulders. Straight arms. Push into the balls of your feet a bit so that the knees don't splay. And let's slowly come on down. If you can avoid splaying the knees, and make sure your feet stay parallel, you're going to get a more amazing stretch in your hip flexors. Letting our feet duck is just a avoidance tactic. So parallel feet. Okay, lift up again. Your choice, Seiki Vanda or, or the Dhanurasana. You're trying to pull your chest through if you're an Urdhva. Slowly come on down. We'll just take one more back bend from our back. This will be Viparita Dandasana. If you have a wall, you could do your headstand or your pincha about two and a half feet away from the wall and put your feet on the wall, walk them down. Your end point will be the same if you walk your feet down the wall. Otherwise, it would be like you're coming into Urdhva Dhanurasana and you'll walk your forearms down, your elbows will touch down pretty close to your head. This is one of those poses where if you let your elbows splay wide, you're just giving yourself more work. So you keep them in as you walk your hands back. You want to work smart, make things easy for yourself. Life is hard enough. We do not need to make our yoga life any more difficult. Let's come on down. If you were using a wall, you could walk yourself up the wall and kick over. I do some shenanigans on my glass door, but I wouldn't do that because I have weight and I don't want it to go through the door. Okay, so let's bring the knees in. Let's rock a little side to side. We're going to do one more back bend, or maybe two but we'll do them from an inversion position. If that idea does not suit you, you could stay here on your back and do more of what we just did. Okay, so when you're ready, roll up. And we'll come into Viparita Dandasana from a headstand. Your choice as to whether you go from your Badahasa A interlace or your Badahasa C palms flat, I haven't done this in a while because I had my little vacation time. So I'm going to do a position a little more stable for me. So we'll find our headstand and then we'll let our feet come down to the floor. We'll try to do this with 100% symmetry. If 
this is not to your liking, you will repeat Pinchamayar Asana and possibly repeat the entrance to Pinchamayar Asana from headstand. That thud you just heard was my feet landing because I do not have the strength to land quietly. So when you're ready, exit your back bend or your inversion if you're in one. And just take a few moments of rest somewhere. And by moments, I actually only mean like three breaths. We can't get too stationary or we'll never get up again. Okay. This next one I'm going to watch. You're either going to again drop over. This time, if you already did it from the headstand, start it in pinch up. So your head is already off the ground. It's not any harder. It's just emotionally weird. So either pinch up, drop over, headstand, drop over, or headstand, lift up to pinch up. Those of you that are going to go from pincha into Viparita Tadasana, as you drop your feet, it's going to feel more like Stanyasana. You're going to be dropping your head also. Oh, that was good, Carol. There was some wiggling, but you were catching yourself. Try it again. Now, Anouk, try to look a little more forward. Push your hips away from the wall. Good. Okay. So whenever you're ready, get out of wherever you are. Take your three or so breaths to recover. You'll have your own idea of where you want to be for recovery. One place I suggest is uh, looking at your screen because my cat is cleaning herself and you can see her little ears and they're so cute. I'm obsessed with her. She basically owns me is what's happening. Okay, right leg in front, pigeon. And we're just going to fold over this leg. We are done with back bends. The best part about her owning me is that she knows that she does. Whenever I'm eating, she's right there with me, taking things off my plate. And I don't even care. Okay, let's rise up, switch sides for pigeon. We can down dog into switch sides or just roll around. And try to keep your hips facing down, not just to benefit that left hip, but you want to feel something in this right hip flexor also. You can use the arms in any way to prop you up and make that alignment happen. Let's rise up. We'll rock to that left hip and face the long edge of your mat just for um, Upavisha Konasana. So it's not a crazy Sankhanasana thing. It's just a V shape. We're going to hold the edges of the feet. And that's how you'll be able to measure your legs. If your legs are too wide, you won't be able to get this grip. Also, if this grip is too difficult, just hold somewhere else along the shin. Flex the feet, kneecaps up. And as you're starting to loosen from the back bends, you just fold a little more and a little more. In the back bends, we were stretching the whole front side of the body. So you were engaging the whole back side of the body. Now we just do the opposite to, to help counterbalance ourselves.
Okay, let's rise up. We'll face the right leg for Hanumanasana. If that does not suit you, repeat pigeon or do Anjaneyasana. Just like in pigeon, we can use our hands quite a lot to help us steer. We'll come through a center place, like a little mock samapanasana, to head over to the other side. And if you were in pigeon or anjana instead, you just do it however makes sense to you this way. Somehow come to your butt and swing the back leg around. Bhattapanasana A, soles of the feet together, chest up, shoulders back, knees down, and lean forward. Over time, you'll get your chest toward your feet, your head toward the floor in front of your feet. That might be by breath number three, by breath number five, might be by next week or in 10 years from now. Let's slowly rise up, Hashimantanasana, legs straight, reach for the edges of your feet, and fold over your legs. You could also interlace your fingers under the feet. If you need more stretch, you could even put a block under your feet and then interlace your fingers around the block. Okay. When you're ready, we'll just rise up and make your way to your back for Shavasana. Arrange your legs in some comfortable fashion.
It's never too late to give up whatever tension you're holding. People meditate for decades just to get a few seconds here and there of peace and clarity. So give yourself that second of heaviness on the ground in your Shavasana. Let's bring one or both knees into the chest so that you can roll to your right. And take a few breaths there in this fetal position, still just limp. Start to sit up, use as few muscles as possible. Just stack your bones, make it easy. Let's bring the hands together. Take a slow inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. Again, inhale. When you get to the top of the breath, sip in just a little extra. Exhale through the mouth. And bring the hands up to the third eye, thumbs between the brows, inhale. And we'll fold forward to exhale. Namaste.